Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today I'd like to show you how I painted this work, which features a piece of glass. And I really enjoy painting glass, because it's see-through, it's, uh, it's luminous, you have these beautiful highlights on there. Also, I'll show you a little trick, which I like to do is removing paint, here you can see it, to create details with minimum efforts. Let's dive right in. Before I start painting, I have my panel prepared. So I put some gesso over it and then a very thin layer of acrylic paint. That's the undercolor you see. Because I don't like to work on a fully bright uh, panel. Then I sketch in my subject just with some thin lines of uh, Pit Pastel pencil. Now it's nowhere detailed at all, just indications. Later on, we'll go over the whole piece again with actual paint. And I use a fairly limited palette for this piece. Let's go over the colors we used. On the top left, we have Payne's Grey, which is a bit of a bluish grey. Next to that, Ultramarine Blue, then Burnt Shanna, followed by Yellow Ochre, followed by Cadmium Yellow Medium, and ultimately Titanium White. And before I started uh, blocking in, I made some groups of colors with these colors alone. As you can see, a very dark blue mixture that's made with that ivory, uh, with, with the Payne's Gray and Ultramarine Blue. And to get a bit more greenish tones, what you see in the middle pile is by adding also some yellow ochre that really softens down the blue. So that's basically yellow ochre ivory blue and white. And then on the far right, we have some colors which I want to use for the, uh, uh, for the cork and perhaps for the champagne in the glass itself. And uh, at the bottom, you see a darker value and a lighter value, and that's based for the background on the, on the foreground. The colors you see on the palette are more intense than as you see them now on the, on the painting. And that's because I paint very thinly. I basically rub out the paint on the painting because this is the first layer and later on I will go over it again with thicker layers. But at least we have a nice base to, to start from. What I feel that really helps with making convincing glass is by using very bright blues as well. And here you can see a very nice mixture of ultramarine blue and titanium white. A lot of titanium white. We'll go over it again and later in the process I also added primary cyan to the mixture which is a more bright blue uh, but that's just later on in the process. We have some champagne laying on the ground here. And actually, we can consider that as a drop of water. And let me just simplify this for you. We just need to play with light and shadows. So here, I'm just merely indicating the shadowy part on the back side of the drop. And here, we're indicating the lighter side on the foreground of the drop. And it might not look like much just yet, but wait and see until we put the final highlights later on with pure whites in there. But with already getting this small basic shape in there with light and dark, you already see that it might look like a drop of water or champagne or whatever it might is, might be. We have the foot of the glass, 
Uh, you see it, it's a bit more behind, so I keep that a bit vague as well. I don't want too much detail on there, too much focus. And inside the glass, where the stem basically hits the glass itself, we have a bit of distortion. So we're making that here as well. It doesn't need to be exactly how you see it on pictures, but just try to give an impression of it. They are already very far with creating a realistic feel to it. As you can see, I'm moving all over the place, uh, just because I have that color at hand and I find it fits at another location as well. See here, we're painting some yellows, which is basically the lights coming through the glass, through the champagne, um, casting that color also on the table. And remember I told you about those vibrant blues? Well, here you have it. This is primary cyan mixed with white. And you get a very nice bright blue. Now, I will smudge it out a bit, as you see here, because I don't want it to be too strong and dominant. But I do think those bright blues, they really add to creating realistic glass. Also, whenever you're painting, keep in mind that you can always make it more interesting than what you see. So here is a nice example, actually. I decided to add a little drop here below the glass. And drops like this create some more tension in a piece because people are familiar with drops falling down. While I was working on this drop, I also took the chance to work further on my droplets on the table itself. As you can see, I'm adding some lighter values on there and making a bit of a flowing movement in that edgy drop over there. Now, it's not complete yet because it's a bubbly substance, right? Yet we don't see any bubbles in there. And that's why I'm just dappling my brush on there, creating random little shapes. I'm not gonna draw every drop individually. I'm just creating the illusion or the impression that there might be drops there. And the brain of the viewer does the rest, honestly. You know, we're all smart enough to say, hey, that's a glass, and hey, there's something pouring out there. And hey, it's a champagne glass. So one and one equals two, right? As mentioned, I would show you a cool, easy trick to create fine details. Here, I'm using a rubber yeah, pencil, so to say, which is mainly used for clay sculpting. And I'm scratching out paint there. And I'm wiping off that uh, the paint from the rubber brush. And because I use a toned underlayer, and due to the fact that that underlayer is dry, that results in the fact that when I scratch out the paint, you see the color which lies underneath. And in this case, it's a perfect base for this metal thread. And should you not be satisfied with your scratching, you can always go over it again with paint. Or just smudge some paint on there from uh, the, the, the surrounding colors. Now, in this string, there's actually quite some detail. And I'm not going to draw all that detail. I'm just indicating the string and the shape of it. That's what you see here. I'm just making very small scratches in there, indicating that it's twisted around. And because it's a very small piece and people will look at the whole thing from a distance probably, it looks convincing enough. I do the same thing for the top later on.
The background is still very rough. So now I'm going over there again to make it a bit more thick. And this is that mixture of ultramarine blue and Payne's gray to create a very dark blue. The brush that I'm using is quite soft. And here I'm blending a bit the glasswork because I, th I, th I think it's too, um, too sharply edged. So I'm just going over it very gently to just blend the colors a bit and make a bit more a realistic glass feel. I think it's time to add some highlights here. And this is basically a pure titanium white and I'm adding some strokes in there just to indicate the brightest parts of the glass because a glass is not complete without very shiny highlights. And I always have a lot of fun uh, in these stages of painting because you can really feel you're coming to a close end and it's starting to really come alive. The iron thread is actually more white and it also is quite shiny when you look at it. So what I'm doing here is just adding some whites to it to indicate highlights. And then you see how simple it can be to create an illusion of metal just by scratching away paint and then simply adding some highlights. It's not much more than that, to be honest. So please do make use of this trick or at least play around with it. You can use it for all sorts of things to play with. I think it's a very handy uh, one to, uh, to be aware of. And now it's all a matter of fine tuning and tweaking and adding those last details. And I love to use my palette knife in the later stages of painting because you can put on paint very thickly. And when you put on paint thickly, it means also that what light hits it, you know, just really the light in the area surrounding you, it reflects of that color and it makes it more intense. Notice how now it's really all coming together by just adding some vague brush strokes in the table, I'm indicating a glow or a shiny table surface, as you might say. And this is by no means precise. It's just indications, rough brush strokes, but look at the effect it has. Something as simple as that can make that table shiny all of a sudden. Now it's these things that I love about painting by keeping it simple, but real. And here we're just adding some tiny dots on that drop on the table. And then immediately you see what happens. It comes alive. It's really a drop which lays on the table. What's also a nice trick is to just smudge out some of that thicker paint to create a very realistic glow because we have a very shiny glass and we want it to glow a bit. So I'm just smudging out a little bit of that paint towards the background and then going over it again to make a soft glow. Very easy. Try it. You'll have fun doing so. For the remainder, it's all about refining, darkening areas where I feel it needs to be darker, but this is something uh, we'll just speed up through. Thanks for watching and please be advised that a like, subscribe and hey, perhaps even a comment would be highly appreciated as it really helps me to develop these videos more often. Let me know also in the comments if there's any specific topic you'd like to know about and I'll be sure to reach out on that. Happy painting!